individual generation in Twine. This video covers macros. There are many different ways to approach procedural generation of content in Twine. This example covers using macros as both a storage and method of generating content. And I want to note at the top here that this example uses Harlow 2.1 story format. The either macro randomly chooses one of the options supplied to it. Consider this example sentence here. It has been eight years since I last saw them arrive on a boat. Let's go back to the story map view and look at this example here. The passage we're currently looking at in the story is the using either passage. As we see here, it uses the either macro in Harlow. The very first uses here chooses a year between 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, then chooses a pronoun, then chooses a method of arrival. In each, in each case, the either method is choosing either of any of the options giving it. So we see the year, the pronoun, and then the arrival method. Each of these generated by Twine using the either macro in this case. Coming back to the playing of it, let's move on here. The range macro creates an array of its values starting from the initial to the last one. The expansion operator serves as a shorthand to quickly spread out values. We can combine the two as a fast way to have a range of values that can be used for macros like either and for. Consider this new sentence example. It has been four years since I last saw her arrive on a boat. The sentence looks the same as the previous example using either, but is now using the range macro. Let's go look at that example in code. Closing this and now opening using range, we see a similar setup to before. Again, in this sentence example, we're using either macro one, two, three times. The last two times, we're seeing pronoun choiceage and our pronoun choice and arrival method are the same, but now we're using the range macro and the expansion operator in Harlow. This is, as I explained, a way to create an array of values using the range macro, 2 to 8 in this case, and the expansion operator to expand those out. So instead of being just simply an array, it's now choosing from a spread out of those values. So just like previous, now 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. And the either macro is choosing one of those. So in this case, we can use the range macro with the expansion operator to create a shorthand if we want a series of data values, in this case, 2 to 8. It doesn't work, however, with string values, like we see with the pronouns and the arrival method. Let's move ahead. We can also save the results of these macros. We don't have to necessarily generate them on the fly every time. We can actually generate them once, save those values, and use those values again later on in this sentence. Coming back to this same example sentence, we see now it has been two years since I last saw him arrive on a boat. We see the same example sentence now for the third time. The first time using the either macro, the second time using the range and either macro, and now we're seeing the result of using those macros and saving those values, and then using the values of the or the values of those variables in this example sentence. Let's go look at the code for this. Coming over to saving choices, we see a similar setup before. Now in example sentence, it says it has been variable years, years, since I last saw variable pronouns arrive, variable arrival. Again, the same general idea, but down here in the example sentence, we see it's just displaying the value of these variables, years, pronoun, and arrival. We see the code, though, is the same, except now we're using the set macro to save the values of these generations. Again, using the range macro with the expansion operator in Harlow, using the either operator to choose the years, choosing between him, her, or them as pronouns, and a rival method choosing the same sets of strings on a boat from over the mountain and traveling down the long road. In this case, and different from the last two, we're now saving these and then using them later. We can also use the for macro to generate loops based on saved values. So not only can we generate those values using either and range, 
We can also save them using the set macro in Harlow and then use saved values to create loops to generate even more values. Let's go look at the code for this. Again, just like we saw in the previous example, we're seeing using setting a value to the result of a choice either of the expansion operator again with the range macro. So range 2 to 8 is an array. The expansion operator is expanding this out to be a range of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. It's then saving that value to loops. Now in these last two code lines here, the for macro is using each a temporary variable underscore i and the same setup we saw when choosing values. Again, the expansion operator with the range macro. In this case, a range of 1, 2, however number we set it to for loops. So we're going to at least 1 to 2, possibly 1 to 8. In each case though, we see we can run that number of loops each time. Again, coming back to the shorthand of the expansion operator and the range macro jittering capital BB and lowercase BB in each case here calling setting an initial value using the loops variable here setting to set to using the either macro the result of the IRA macro either macro choice of the expansion operator using the range macro so we're creating a range of values 2 to 8 we're then choosing a value within that range, saving it to loops, and using that to drive this for loop here. Finally, we can use a display macro as a way of including content from one passage in another. This is pretty common in Twine. It's a way to create modular content. We can place code in one passage and then call it as if it was a function in programming terminology from other passages. It can be used over and over and over again. Instead of having to copy that code again in one passage after another after another, we can write it in one passage and then call it or use it from those passages. And this is again a way of creating modular content in Twine. So let's look at this final example here. Coming over to using the display macro, we see the display macro is being used three times here and each time it's calling a passage or including the content of another passage. In this case, the passage create BB. Finally, if we look at the content of that passage, we see the same code we've been seeing before. Again, using the main range macro with the expansion operator, using the either macro, within saving that results to the variable loops, using the value of the variable loops to drive our for loops here, generating bb uppercase and bb lowercase and then we're using it multiple times in the using the display macro passage calling it multiple times this has been an example of creating procedural content using either macro to choose between strings and data values using the range macro to create a range of data values using the expansion operator to expand those data values, then using it in combination with the either macro to choose between them, using the saved result of that to drive our for loops, and then using the saved result of that and the display macro to write the code in one place and call it in another. These have all been examples of how to create procedural generation content in Twine. Again, using the Harlow story format, and the available macros within that story format. Thanks for watching.